California has a lot going for it. We're excellent at labeling our hills. We have two million more people than the entire country of Canada and 15 million more aggressive drivers than Canada. And let's face it, between California and Baja California, we definitely have a better football team. We also lead the nation in occupational licensing. Occupational licenses are when you need the government's permission to perform a job. And for some jobs, this makes a lot of sense. For example, I don't know if rocket surgeon is a thing. But if it is, it seems like something you should have to pass a test on and probably be a CBS miniseries. In general, I am for licensing jobs that would result in body fluids shooting out of you if you screwed up and not for licensing anything else. And that's the idea government usually presents to the public. Licenses are a public safety issue. Do you want a bunch of unlicensed rocket surgeons firing ballistics and transplanting spleens in a basement? Of course not. Although that is the state flag of Baja, California. And I gotta tell you, nobody celebrates the 4th of July like a Baja, California rocket hospital. The problem is, there's no actual correlation between public safety and occupational licensing. For example, I'd always just assume that you became a funeral director by failing at being a wedding planner. But it turns out, no, they are a heavily regulated industry. In terms of public safety, who exactly could an unlicensed apprentice embalmer actually hurt? The corpse is already room temperature. The worst case scenario for an unlicensed embalmer scenario is they screw up and make zombies, which is exactly why we have the Second Amendment. But cemetery broker? If you mess up a cemetery real estate transaction, it's not like all the souls get evicted from heaven and have to hang out in purgatory until they get a court injunction. Or cemetery salesperson. Guys, a coffin is not a car. If you buy a dodgy casket, it doesn't hydroplane out on the highway or plunge into a cornfield. It's literally just a box you shove corpses into. My great uncle Gerald decided to put his body in an old safe he found in his barn. And later, when we finally cracked the code and retrieved his body, we buried him in a discount coffin we bought off Craigslist. If you go through the many, many requisite jobs which require occupational licenses in California, about one out of every five workers needs one, you'd have to come up with some truly colorful, paranoid scenarios to press a public safety argument. For example, cosmetologists. Should we license cosmonauts? Sure. I don't want 16-year-olds driving spaceships unless they can pass driver's tests. But Cosmetologists. No? Improperly trained cosmetologists are a lot more likely to result in horrible bangs than, say, decapitating someone. Ditto many of the other baffling occupational licenses required to work in California, like an amateur mixed martial artist or an authorized horse racing agent, which, to be clear, are not a wacky joke I came up with. In California, you need a license to be an amateur mixed martial artist or an authorized horse racing agent. Now I'm confident if we sat down and spoke with the California Cosmetology Licensing Board, they could provide us with grisly anecdotes of inadequately trained manicurists who got flustered and shanked somebody. And therefore, why public safety and consumer protection absolutely necessitate licensing these dangerous professions, just like authorized horse racing agents, of course. But when we compare jobs with real threats of blood shooting out, and jobs with a modest risk of an embarrassing yearbook photo. In terms of legally mandated training, it's hard to make the public safety argument with a straight face. Emergency medical technicians are licensed in the state of California. To obtain that license, prospective EMTs have to take 160 hours of training. Okay, so far so good. To become a cosmetologist in California, which does not involve operating those electric paddles you shock your heart out of its nap with, you need 1,600 hours of classes. Animal trainers aren't even licensed in 41 states, but in California, they require 30 times as much training as EMTs. Commercial door repair contractors aren't licensed in 26 states. But in California, they require 39 times as much training as EMTs. Were you to look through the time commitments and licensing fees associated with jobs in California against how risky they actually are, you'd see less of a time to blood correlation and more of an arbitrary smattering of requirements. The conclusion, either it's surprisingly simple to be an EMT and far less risky than training golden retrievers, or 
those licenses were never really about public safety. It turns out the hoops you have to jump through in order to procure an occupational license aren't drafted by some objective board of public safety experts. They're cobbled together by the industries themselves to protect people who already have jobs from competition. Sometimes politicians have good intentions and they pass a law that has bad outcomes. And we should judge and reform policies based on those bad outcomes. This is not an example of that. To be very clear, a significant amount of occupational licenses are private businesses using force of law to screw over other people. They aren't an issue of unintended consequences. They're an example of malicious intentions masquerading as the public good. We're told that occupational licenses exist for public safety and consumer protection, like a screening process. But in reality, they're just speed bumps, industries who already have licenses put up to stop newcomers from competing with them. If you find out that in order to work in a given field, you have to train for several months and pay a fee, it might be too inconvenient to bother and you look elsewhere. Or more likely, if you don't have a lot of money, you simply can't afford to take three months off to do the required training for the job. The average amount of training time a prospective worker needs to get a license among 76 low to moderate paying jobs is 827 days and the average fee is $486. If you're poor and you don't have savings, you don't have the luxury of not working for weeks or months and then handing over hundreds of dollars. That shields incumbents in those jobs from competition. For some occupations with on-the-job training, it ensures that newcomers have to work as trainees in existing businesses instead of striking out on their own as competitors. A bit like feudalism. And it works out great for the state government. Because every time California issues one of those licenses, it rakes in $486. That's revenue from the absolute easiest tax source there is. Unorganized poor people. If you try raising income taxes, you'll get voter opposition and likely lose the next election. But putting fees on low-income jobs? It's a sweet deal for everyone. If you already have a license, you're shielded from competition and you make more money. And if you're the state government, you get a trickle of revenue from poor people trying to get jobs they desperately need. The only people who lose out are everyone else. You, me, but most specifically, people who really need jobs right now. When you restrict how many people can do a job, fewer people do that job, which is to say you reduce the supply. And that means, qua the law of supply and demand, the price goes up. Morris Kleiner and Evgeny Voronikov wrote a white paper estimating that California has eliminated almost 200,000 jobs due to occupational licenses. And that, in turn, cost the state $840 million of lost economic output. So basically, occupational licenses produces a bunch of dead weight. And the result is not enough of this green math and too much of this red math. That's bad and all, but really, the most economically vulnerable part of our population, the working poor, who live paycheck to paycheck, clip coupons, and never say stuff like, you know, back during my study abroad at Nice, those people are needlessly kept out of the market by a rigged system. Now, you might say, well, all right, so there's a drag effect, but surely, surely, introducing tests and training and a screening process protects us from idiocy and malfeasance. Well, if we're only going on hunches and a control freak reflex, maybe. If we're going off actual data and careful analysis of it, no. The sum total of occupational licensing doesn't make us safer or ramp up the quality of goods and services. Now granted, I am a fringe lunatic who doesn't think you should need to take a test and pay $400 to become a custom upholsterer or a shorthand courtroom reporter, both of which require licenses in the state of California. But you know who's equally suspicious of these licensing quality control claims? The Obama administration. The Obama administration commissioned a report on occupational licensing and found that, yes, there was a screening effect from licenses, which might increase quality. But because there are less people working in a given field, low quality incumbents are shielded from competition, which brings down the quality. So it's a wash but only a wash in terms of quality control. On the concept of occupational licensing itself, the administration pretty much had the same position as me, only 
you know, more think tanky and less funny. I read most of it. They don't even have jokes about funeral parlors, which is just a really easy joke right there. In a nutshell, the administration said certain jobs ought to be licensed, but unnecessary occupational licensing has exploded in recent years and needs to be streamlined and curtailed. Now, to be clear, you are absolutely going to be able to find examples of incompetent or unscrupulous practitioners of various professions. Politics, for example, which doesn't even require a license, just being better at scaring old people than your opponent. Despite my earlier delightful funerary tirade, there have indeed been funeral homes that let the meat lockers go bad or sold bones to collectors. There have been crummy speech pathologists, and I assume, yes, there has even been one dud of a shorthand courtroom reporter. But licensing regimes don't alter the fabric of reality. You can't just create a seeing eye dog training license and assume it's going to banish all evil from the field. The empirical evidence we have at our disposal, from Democrats and President Obama's commission, Republicans and President Trump's commission, and libertarians from the alternate universe in which Gary Johnson became president, and also one American idol, is that occupational licenses don't really promote safety or quality because they're not designed to. What they're designed to do is use the power of the state to protect existing businesses from competition. So what can California do to prune back some of these needless licenses and let more poor people start climbing the economic ladder until they, too, can enjoy the wealth and prestige of being a professional horse racing agent? As I said earlier, I think we should license certain jobs, but only the ones that result in death, injury, or messy body fluids when they screw up. Let the other ones go. That doesn't mean we have to live in some vocational version of the purge, just that we're careful about telling people whether they're allowed to have a job or not. My ideal system would look something like this. At the bottom of said pyramid are jobs that aren't actually a problem. For example, in Florida, which, to put it lightly, has its own policy issues, they license psychics. I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say, you don't need to license psychics. Because psychics are, at best, stage magicians with folksy accents, and at worst, frauds who should give me back the $14,000 I gave them. I can say with great certainty that you can tinker with the psychic licensing regime all you want. It's not going to produce better quality psychics. Next up, on my ladder of occupational licensing options, let Yelp sort it out. I'd say this probably constitutes a good three quarters of all jobs out there. If you are a crummy tour guide, snippy reviews will eventually jettison you from the market. If you're a crummy tattoo artist, eventually, people will quit coming to you for a squiggly rendition of a badger fighting a robot that I had to pay $800 to get subsequently removed so I could swim at Whitewater without my shirt again. Big fan of Yelp and markets. Next up, certification. This sounds like licensing, but there's an important distinction. A certification is a stamp of approval. A license is a permission to work. Many professions have their own private bodies which issue certificates to people based on training, testing, or performance. They signal to consumers that some threshold of quality has been met, or perhaps that they should be wary of people who failed to get a certificate. But you can still operate without one, without having to pay $400 and spend weeks or months of training instead of working. Finally, at the very tippy top of things we could do is occupational licensing. Doctors, pilots, electricians, that sort of thing. Larry Sharp, who has spoken at length about the difference between certificates and licenses, makes this distinction. If you'd let your friend do it, it doesn't need to be licensed. If you're afraid to let anyone except a rigorously trained professional do it, okay, issue a license. I'm describing a system more than a policy, so let me provide a couple of quick solutions California could do to rapidly reform its bloated licensing regime. First, immediately drop all restrictions on horse racing agents. My ancestors didn't fight the British just to crawl to some bureaucrat on hands and knees to get permission to race their horse they also stole from the British. I will fight and die on this hill. Next, allow potential workers to sue licensing boards in a court of law. Once in court, the license in question is presumed unnecessary unless the licensing board convinces the jury it's actually a boon to public safety and not just incumbents rigging the economy to force out competition. 
Also, if you're a producer on Law & Order, please call me because I have a really good idea for a fun spinoff series about suing licensing boards. I am aware that California really likes experts and putting them in control of things. So let's go that route. Right now, about half of California's occupational licensing boards are required by law to have a majority of their members work in the professions they oversee. This is to say, in California, we ask funeral directors if they'd like to throw tests, training, and fees at their potential competitors. Unsurprisingly, they do. So, scrap all of these croniest licensing boards. In their place, create an independent California Licensing Commission. The commission could assess the actual, present danger inherent in various careers. Not hypothetical risks, not slightly irritating, but definitely not life-threatening risks, just are there immediate and substantive risks to public safety in a given job? Maybe they'd give an annual report to the state legislature, which would vote on it. Maybe they'd run licenses themselves. Either way, it would be an improvement over the current system, where we empower incumbents to ice out competition and poor people. And regardless of whether you want to use my less blood, more jobs pyramid, licensing burden of proof court system, or an independent commission, immediately issue good faith licenses to anyone who's already obtained one in another state. If you've already jumped through all the meaningless, unnecessary hoops to get a superfluous cosmetology license in Arkansas, or an inessential furniture upholsterer sham license in Missouri, we'll just assume you're competent enough to not kill people over here and let you hang out your shingle. I hope none of us ever have to get real jobs, but if we do, I hope we can legally practice them without California getting all California about it. Good luck! With the Pacific Legal Foundation, I'm Andrew Heaton.